The problem is how do people react to the fact that there are different opinions? That is more problematic. And this is what is causing the fitna. Give you an example. Great Imam Abu Hanifa. According to Imam Abu Hanifa, you raise your hand once in the salah and that is it. That's it. You don't raise your hands anymore. One time he was praying next to Abdullah ibn Mubarak. Now Abdullah ibn Mubarak raises his hands every time he says Allahu Akbar. Can you imagine this? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Even in sujood, he raised his hands, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And he's sitting next to Imam Abu Hanifa. And Imam Abu Hanifa was not only smart, but they said that he was a very funny man. He had a great sense of humor. So when the salah was over, he looked at him and he said, Abdullah, were you trying to fly, flipping your hands up and down every time? And Abdullah Mubarak laughed and he said, you know what, Imam? You raised your hands the first time and I thought you already flew away from us. But that's exactly how they took it. He is of this opinion. I am of this opinion. Life goes on. He has his proof. He has his proof. His intention is to pray in the best way he thinks represents the Salah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. End of it. That's one point. The second point is that whenever Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught, he taught with simplicity did not complicate matters. He said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray as you have seen me pray. A Bedouin would come into town and he would see Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pray and he would go and he would pray.